Hello, everyone. So I welcome you all for this uh, lecture series on data communication. And in this lecture, we are going to discuss on the second kind of packet switching network, which is called virtual circuit. So in, your, in our previous class, we were talking about the switching methods, right? The need for the switching is when we want to communicate multiple devices, we discussed what is called as topology, right? So there we talk about star topology, mesh topology, and bus topology, and ring topology. But the drawback with those method of connecting the devices is when we are having a large number of users, which we observe in computer network, very large number of computers will be connected. And geographically, they are at a very larger distance. So it is not practical to go with a topology method to connect those devices. So the solution is using this switching. So switching, these are the devices which actually connect the two nodes or the end devices, okay, for communication purpose. Either we can have a permanent connection, uh, means uh, the resources are allocated for the complete time of duration of uh, the communication. And once the communication ends, the, all the resources are just released. Or we can have a network of these switch, switches, which will allocate the resources based upon the demand. So based upon this, we have two techniques. One is called as circuit switching, and the another one is called as packet switching networks. So we are going to see two kinds of circuit switching network and packet switching network. And as we discussed in the circuit switching networks, we have to observe the following. There is a resource allocation. The resources are allocated, right? So when I say resources are allocated, a permanent circuit is established between the two end devices, right? For the duration of communication, that's what we have to remember. So there is three phases that we observe, where first the setup of the circuit is done between the two end devices through this network of switches. Then the data transfer happens through this circuit. And finally, we use a teardown. So all the things are, I mean, all the resources are released. So this kind of circuit we observe in telephone networks, right? So we make a call to the other user and it goes through a circuit, right? Once the call is completed, we disconnect the connection, releasing all the resources, right? But it is not so efficient when it comes to computer networks, because in computer networks, we generally connect the computer to the internet or to the network for communication for the whole duration, right? So we, uh, we, we don't uh, you know, do like in telephones, okay? So this is not so efficient, right? So we have observed about the efficiency of and observe that, and, and we can observe that it is not so efficient for the computer networks. We also seen the delay. So there are delay for the propagation and there is a establishment of connection. So there is a delay for setup and tear down. So there is no delay in waiting at the switches. So once the data, once the uh, circuit is set up, there is a continuous transmission of data. So continuously, we are going to transmit. It means that there is no packetization of the data. Whereas in the packet networks, we observe two types. One is called as datagram network, right? And the another one is called as virtual circuit network. Virtual circuit network. In packet networks, the resources are allocated on the resource allocated 
on demand right so on based upon the requirement we are going to allocate the resources so there is no uh, on demand okay, let let it be that so in in if we in the previous class we discussed about this datagram datagram and we observed that there is no these three phases there is no setup phase tear down phase or the data i mean only the data transfer will happen but we don't have that phase there is no permanent allocation of resources the data generated by the users are made into packets or frames and each of these packets or frames will be having an address that is what we have to observe so there is an address for this the destination node the next which which it is going so we have an address of that device so the device the switch will receive these packets and buffer it right so there is something called as waiting right so we have to buffering it so that leads to some waiting into the in the switches once all the packets are received from the user to that switch or from the uh, previous switch all the packets are buffered and based upon the uh, resources available the output ports are selected they are forward so it is like store and forward concept store and forward concept right because of this the packets received are out of order out of order we are not going to receive them in the same order what we are transferring because each of these packets can now take different parts right so they take different parts so that is the reason it will result into what is called out of order and it is left to the higher layers how to deal with out of order packets so this uh, datagram network we see in the network layer right and uh, so the if you observe the efficiency of this so this for computer networks will be very efficient because only when the data is there only when the demand is there then the resources are allocated so obviously it is much efficient when compared to the circuit but along with the delay in uh, the data transfer along with the delay with the prop of the propagation we also observe that there are we observe that there are waiting delays also correct so there is an another solution which will combine the advantages of these two techniques which is the discussion of the today's class which is called virtual circuits virtual circuit network now the idea of this virtual circuit network is to combine these both switching networks. that is the circuit switching networks and the datagram switching networks it means you allocate the resource on demand so that will be there so you are going to allocate the resource on demand it means and we can also say that the resource are permanently allocated it is it is it it, it merges both right how does it do? when i say that there is a resource allocated that it means that similar to circuit switching there are three phases setup phase data transfer phase and tear down phase this three phases will be there but how these three phases are done so it means before uh, when there is no data we are not going to carry out these operations only when the data is there these operations are carried right it means again we are going to see that the data is sent in terms of packets or frames right so the data is not continuously sent so now the data is there instead of sending it continuously they are packetized and these uh, switches will establish a a temporary kind of connection when the data is there and the data is transferred and once the data transfer is complete the resources are released okay since we are using here the packets uh, we also need addressing right some addressing mechanism is required 
okay because whenever the data is available we are transferring right so we also need the addressing schemes here okay the another point that we have to observe see in the datagram network because of the packeting and the concept of store and forward we are going to observe a out of order of arrival of packets because there is no permanent connection but here that's not the case we are going to see that the packets are received in the order it means once the packets are available for communication the circuit is set up a temporary circuit is set up and all the packets remember here not the data all the packets i mean uh, not all the data mean not the continuously we are sending that data all the packets that are created will follow the same path so that's how the virtual circuit works what it actually means is if we take any switch right so if we take any switch in this network right the data that is coming to the switch will be having two parts it means we are talking about the address mechanism what happens with this uh, virtual circuit the the method in the virtual circuit is it uses two kinds of addresses one is called as global address the another one is called as local which we call it as virtual circuit identifier the global address is concerned with the end devices address the address of the end devices from where the data is generated and where the data is going the complete data is going to be received whereas the virtual circuit identifier is the address between the local devices between from one switch that is from the device to a switch and one switch to the another switch not from device to device device to device are identified using the global address it means that a source generates a data right so it is generating a data a packet and each of this packet consists of an address which is called vci local address vci so if i assume that this is my vci the local address so it means the address of this switch the address for this switch the address for this switch is 70 and the data which comes out of this switch will again use a separate vci okay the vci of the next switch along with the data okay so data is generated by one source which will which will be forward to the switch which is identified by a vci hope you are getting my point so data is generated by some source it might be end device or a switch and that switch will append one header to it which is called vci the local address that address is the address of the of the immediate next switch okay so vci uses to achieve the uh, uh, the requirements that what we discussed here we use the addressing mechanism right so similarly we are having three phases as in the circuits as i told you there are three phases okay so there are three phases okay so we have the first phase is the setup phase then the data transfer phase it is a one word and finally the tear down phase okay which we will understand that how these uh, three phases are actually set up so what we have to remember is there is a local address that is used here and using this addressing mechanism we will see how the data is transferred how the data i mean the circuit is set up fine so let us first discuss with 
the data transfer phase. I'll take the setup phase later. Why we discuss with the uh, data transfer phase is, we will understand here that how this switch actually works and what do you mean by the routing table? Okay, so it uses the table of, uh, you know, the devices, how the devices are routed. Okay. Oh, so we will take this circuit, which is from the textbook I copied. So we have a switch here, and this switch is having three ports. Okay, port number one here, port two, and port three. Now, each of this switch will have a routing table. This is called as a routing table. The table which tells that what are all the ports and the VCI that are available. We will see how this table is populated in the setup phase. So, first let us assume that the switch, the whole network is set up. And after the setup, every switch is having a table like this. Before setup, we don't have any kind of uh, table, I mean, the table will be empty. So the data is now generated. Okay, so there are two packets that are arriving. The packets are arriving from uh, the VCIs, uh, need to be transferred to the VCIs 77 and 14. They are having two packets that are coming, that is 77 and 14 to the switch. Okay, so when this uh, data that is generated by source comes to this switch. Okay, this is generated by a source. So observe that. Okay, this is an example we are taking. Okay, so let's see that how what will happen when I receive such kind of data. So it will come to this switch. Now in the VCI, we can see that at port one, okay, we are ready to receive the packets with VCI 14 and 77. If I receive it from 14, the outgoing port I will select is three and I will add a VCI 22 to it, right? So it is creating a table, right? So for, uh, this is a local address as I told you, not the, uh, the physical address of the device, they are the virtual addresses. So at the port one, I'm using uh, a VCI as 14, and I have to send it, the, the switch we has to send it to port three, it has to send to the port three, adding an VCI 21, right? And the second packet we are going to receive that incoming is again from the port one with the VCI 77. And the outgoing then it will be port two, you append a VCI with 41. So each of the switch will be maintaining a table. Okay, so that, that the idea I want, what we have to understand is every switch will be having such table. And this table is created during the setup phase. Once the communication data transfer is complete, this table will be reset. So there will be no VCIs that are there. Okay, so that's how the uh, virtual circuit works. So only when the data is generated and the data is started to transferring, I mean to communicate, then these table are generated. Now, let us see how this data is transferred. Again, I'll take this example, which is there in the textbook. Okay. Now observe here, what is happening. Now we are taking a network. There are two devices, device A, computer A and a computer B. And they are connected through this network. So we have this network. So this network, since a large geographical area is connected, we can call it as a band, a wide area network where many switches are there. 
and as i told you every switch now it will be maintaining a a table where the data has to be routed so if i see at this first switch this first switch right so it is having its own table here where there are port 1 at port 1 all the port 1s with vcis are listed and what has to go to port 3 and similarly in this table it will be also be there what has what will go to port 2 what will go to port 4 so every device every switch will be having now this table as i told you i'll repeat it again these tables are created during the setup phase fine so now we are assuming that the setup phase is done it means what is setup phase creating this table okay now all the packet that comes here they will follow this path the follow the path as mentioned in the table itself so that's why we call this virtually a circuit okay big because we are we are dealing with the tables here now a data is generated by a, a packet so here for me the data is a packet so it is having a vci 14 and when it comes here it sees that the switch will observe that it has to be forwarded to the port 3 with a vci 66 so that 66 number will be added to the packet so there is a dedicated path whichever the device comes whichever the packet comes to this switch to the first switch they will they will that that data will be forwarded to the next device based upon this table okay predefined table now we have this data here with a packet 66 which is arriving so we see here which is arriving to my second switch right so when it comes it receives that from port 1 with a vci 66 the data will be received and you need to forward it to the port 2 with a vci 22 okay so that is already defined so switch will append this 22 to the data or to the packet and it will forward this through this port 2 now the data will be again received at the last switch that is at the third switch and here again we have we are observing that to whom it has to be sent right so this will be forwarded to the vci with a vci 77 so this this is how this data transfer will happen in case of our virtual circuit net okay hope you are you are clear with this concept right so <clears throat> the data i mean the path between the two are set up right they are set up how do i set up by using this table concept so you put through with route it has to go so create a routing table and you forward that now let us see how this setup request is being done okay so let me take one more so okay. so again i'm taking the same example in the as in the textbook so what we are talking now is about the setup phase initially there are no uh, what i can say uh, during this before this setup all my tables are reset so we don't have any clear information about the routing table what we know is only the vci number that is coming in the input port so how this happens we will look at in the uh, in the further algorithms of routing so now let us assume that we have an idea that the packet that i am receiving from the uh, previous node is having some vci right so a is generating a packet so let's call this packet as a and the switch will receive and it will identify it as uh, vci 14 right and we have only an idea so what we are doing is we are creating the table we are not putting any vci here okay we are setting up the phase so we will assign a vci to this so it will be transferred the outgoing port will be taken as 3 right because 
we are not allocating the resources earlier we are only doing the allocation when the data comes at the switch in circuit switching that was not true so here that is not the case so when the data comes that the, the port it sees uh, free is port 3 so data will be outputted to the push it to the port uh, port uh, 3 which will be received at the switch 2 again it sees that the data is received incoming line is from port 1 with a vci 66 and the outgoing port it will select is 2 so data will be forwarded to this port 2 the switch 3 port 2 we are going to receive is a vci 22 and it has to go to port 3 where the device is 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 disconnected now Let's see what will happen. Now let us assume that we have a VCI, the B, the device will send its own VCI to the, to the signal back. So I'll be receiving this VCI as 77 because that will become my incoming now, right? So incoming is port, is, uh, port three and uh, uh, the node B will send the packet with a VCI 77. Now the sender is acknowledging, right? So we can say that this is an acknowledgement. I start with 14. The A is sending 14. And this goes through this path. It goes through this path like this. And we are going to receive it at B. So the setup request has been made. Now it will send this VCI as 77. So 77 at port 3. Now we know from which line we received the request, right? We already have this. So it has to be appended with, with 22. So this will send VCI 22 here. Right? And finally, this device, the switch device, it is going to send the packet with the port one with a VCI 66. So this I'm going to get here as 66. Right? So this is how the setup is being done. Okay. So the uh, okay. The setup. Once the setup is done, now we have the table which we see here. Right. Same table what we have generated is created. So we set up this phase. Then we do the data transfer. And finally, once the data transfer is completed, there is a teardown phase. It means we just need to reset all our uh, uh, tables, right? So what uh, the routing tables we have created. So obviously it, uh, we can see that uh, this method is having better efficiency when compared to So efficiency, if we see in this technique is, uh, uh, is much better uh, when compared to the circuit switching. And, and uh, it is also good when we observe with the datagram network. The data is there and uh, we see whenever the data is demand, uh, the bandwidth is very efficiently is used. So what are the delays that we are going to observe? So if I take uh, that example of two devices and two switches, so we have switch A and there is a switch B, right? So if I draw its timeline diagram, okay, so what we observe is, first there is a setup phase, so for the setup phase, we will want we won't wait for the uh, any packets to come. Okay, so we'll first set up the connection. It means the tables are created. So this delay is what we observe first, which is called as a setup delay. So we can call this as the setup delay. Then the data transfer happens in terms of packets. So there is no uh, uh, no the idea of store and forward will be there. So there will be some waiting time. 
So the, this, this is how we see that the data is transferred. And once this data transfer happens, we have a teardown. So the, the delay that we experience now is, is high. When we are having the setup time, so this is setup time. Uh, we have some teardown time. And there is the waiting time also is there in this case. The propagation time is also there. And there is a time for the message also. We have frame time. Right. So the delay is a bit uh, high when we compare it with the, uh, uh, the circuit switching or packet switching. To summarize about these three techniques, uh, let me take uh, the table. So I just prepared this chart, which will give me the comparison of these three methods. Okay, so we start with circuit switching. And uh, as we've seen that it is not efficient as the other two types of networks because uh, resources are allocated during the entire duration of the connection. And if you observe the delay, of course the delay is very minimum. There is no waiting time. And uh, uh, the delay we see is in the setup phase, that is the propagation time, uh, the signal transfer, the acknowledgement uh, time taken, and the signal transfer. And uh, the, we, okay, wait a minute. So the delay in the data transfer is because of only the propagation time and the data transfer time, and time is needed to take on the circuit. So in three uh, parts, we have observed the delay, which is minimum. Now coming to the datagram network, uh, the efficiency of is better than the circuit switch network and resources are allocated only when the packets are transferred. Okay, so what we can see is there is a greater delay in the uh, datagram network uh, because even though there are no setup and teardown phase and it is mainly because of the waiting time. Okay, and uh, uh, the delay between the packets is also not uniform because at each switch, the packets are given a different delay and that will also relay, uh, as we seen that, because of it, we get an out of order kind of packets. And that will also cause the inter packet delay, which is not uniform. Now, if you see the virtual circuit, uh, the there is a big advantage, even if the resource allocation is done on the demand. <coughs> so there are delay for setup and uh, teardown for one time. Uh, and there is no waiting time in the setup. But in the data transfer, there is certain amount of delay. Right? OK, so this ends our discussion on uh, uh, the switching network. So. Thank you very much. Uh, we will uh, discuss on error control mechanism from our next class. I hope you, you got the concept very well. See you then. Thank you.